All right. Good morning. Tradingology.com's trading room for June 11th, 2020. Get the ball rolling. Speakers are up. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How's it <clears throat> doing? Good. My what? eyes are so tired from reading, watching videos, researching. I have to wear my glasses today. Yeah, I got a plethora of things I was reading after. I only took a real quick trade this morning, in and out, shortly after the open. I waited for after that, at least the first 10 minutes, and I got a quick one in, or five minutes, I forget what it was. But these are nuts numbers. I think, uh, yeah, well, we got out of our short position a little bit too early. <laughs> the MES, but. I know. You know, the, the volatility was just insane. It's better to be safe than sorry sometimes. If we would have stayed in, it would have went the other way. Well, I mean, at the announcement yesterday, that the Fed was keeping rates at zero until 2022. It swung wildly. I mean, it was up 20 and it was down 170 and, and it was all over the place. It was actually, uh, I should play this for you quick before I forget about this tab. <clears throat> It's a little clip. I don't know exactly when these were recorded, but I'll pull it over here so you guys can see it. Good morning, Andre. Here's a quick one. I think you should be able to hear this. If you can't, let me know. What Congress has done to date has been uh, remarkably timely and, and forceful. There are scenarios within Main Street where we could lose all of our capital and we're prepared to do that. I was like, what? Uh, what? <laughs> what? That's insane. Did you hear that? <clears throat> Play that one again. What the? And, and forceful. There are scenarios within Main Street where we could lose all of our capital and we're prepared to do that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Mnuchin actually said that. He's not investing in crypto where you're prepared to lose all your capital. <laughs> this, is just, this is the U.S. government treasury department talking here. Yeah. I wanted to call out risk there, which was the risk of longer-term damage to, to the economy. There is the risk of permanent damage. And as I've said before, we're conscious of the health issues. What's unusual about this is it's all about the service sector, and particularly those parts of the service sector that are uh, where we're, there are lots and lots of in-person contact. We don't intend to send anybody back to work without the protections, and I would say I was prepared to come there today. I thought, No, we're not going to listen to ads. We'll close that guy. That was just unreal. Unbelievable, you know? Unbelievable. Just everything I'm reading about, you know, with the recent BlackRock and did you catch Mike's video yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Yes, I did. Oh, he railed on BlackRock. He said, "Oh, okay. So the the Fed's give the Fed's giving them money, so then they can go out and buy their own ETFs, make a fee on the purchase, and then the fee on the sale. And so basically, they're just trading with themselves." Yeah. So it's like I love the analogy of you're going to sell your house. And you're the real estate agent that gets paid to sell it. And you're also the one that's buying it. <laughs> yeah. And you get to own another house and buy that and own that too. So you just do, you're selling to yourself for yourself yeah. and you pay yourself. You're the buyer, you're the seller, and you're the agent. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it I was just, oh my God. Yeah, it's just, I don't know how it's legal. That's their way of getting around it because it is illegal, but they found a way to actually do it. Well, that's because nobody's really paying attention. I mean, nobody who, anybody who raises a red flag and says, hey, wait a minute, especially those in Congress, you know, what you're doing is illegal and we need an investigation and we need to audit you and we need to, you know, kind of put the brakes on what you're doing is going to be seen as somebody who doesn't want to give stimulus checks to the unemployed and those affected by the, the illness. Right. Yeah, it's going to be. That's political death. You're trying to not, you know, help people in need, exactly. Yeah, it's political death. Especially in an election year, right? Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. 
Uh, the 10 year has gone back down <clears throat> and hit close to uh, 1%, hit, I think it's 0.9 something. It's back down, I think it's down to 0.6 again. <clears throat> of course, after yesterday when the Fed came out and they said, well, you know, we're gonna keep in, uh, interest rates to zero and for two more years, which they cannot do, by the way. <laughs> it's impossible for them to do that. I will. I would bet my house and everything I own that they will not keep them at zero. Yeah, I was, you know, I was half surprised that they didn't start inkling around this new lower bound where they don't call it negative, but they call it a lower bound. Yeah, what would they, what would they call it then if they do go uh, to negative? 0.25 to zero. Yeah. They'd still call it zero. <laughs> they're probably going to come up with a new word. That's what they're waiting for. So they don't call it a negative point. Uh, it's going to be a lower sector something. They got their wordsmiths working on it. Right. So there's your ZN shooting up at the close and continuing all overnight. Yeah, I had some uh, TLT puts. It worked out okay, but yesterday they got killed. A couple of days ago they got killed, so I got out of them. I lost a little bit of money on them, but uh, it was it was doing nicely when the when the ten year went up to 0.9. Uh, I think in the long term, here's what here's the scenario that I'm thinking about though is that everybody's anticipating now that the Fed has announced zero rates until 2022, that we're gonna be in this low interest ZERP environment. What happens if the 10 year goes to back to 1%, mm -hmm. 1.25, 1.4, yeah, 1.5. Right. There's no way, I mean, I would short, I would short the three month and, and uh, or, uh, <clears throat> go long the three month and, and, and short the uh, 10 year. Right. I do an arbitrage opportunity. People, the bond traders will go absolutely insane with that. They can't. They cannot keep. They cannot do that. The Fed will only follow long-term rates, and there has been a little bit movement, but they're trying to instill that confidence. It's uh, the Fed has only confidence working in their favor. That's all they have. It's a confidence game. And it dropped. It was. It hit up to 0.91, and we're back to 0.75 today, or as of yesterday. Yep. And and this morning it's a 0.62. <clears throat> it's a confidence game. They aren't actually doing anything. They're right. They're saying right. what they're going to do. Exactly. That's the that's what they yeah. all have done, right? They try and hope that the markets react the way they want to, that they actually have no control. Yeah. And it was Powell when he came out as Fed chairman who said, "I'm raising rates." And then he started out with the, the right intentions, but it didn't last yeah, long. Yeah, two months later, he said, well, you got to lower them. Hold on, I saw the inside story now that I'm the chairman. <laughs> yeah. He got the whisper number. Exactly. Jeez, unbelievable. This is just, uh, I feel like going on one of these rants today. <laughs> these guys are insane. I had a feeling after this week, and then, of course, today's the first time, I think, that we had the new jobless report come out with another 1.5. It was lower than they expected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it actually well, you know, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great number. Except it doesn't. It, you know what? You know what kills me is in, in the unemployment uh, number, they actually they don't they don't count any of the people who have been looking for a job for or have not looked for a job for the past year. So if they didn't get a job last year. And they're still they're still unemployed. They don't count them as unemployed. Yeah, they're not even on the radar. Yeah, there's still millions of people out there that are still unemployed. That they don't count. They Wait. only count the people who are unemployment claims. And so, if they got off unemployment claims and they still don't have a job, then they can't. They don't get counted. Yeah, that's the exactly. Like these are just new ones. That's what a lot of people don't get. Yeah. So, what is the official rate then for unemployment? Oh, they won't tell you that. <laughs> Probably thirty-two percent already. <laughs> yeah. Andre says. Oh, well, we had one point eight coming back. Right. Uh, I think he's got a question around your arbitrage. He says, "Can you explain the relationship between that short and long-term rates again?" So the Fed can uh, influence the one month, two month, three month. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, after that, it's really market. So. 
because the Fed funds rate that they can influence is the overnight rate that banks lend to each other, which we know is kind of broken anyway since last September when the rates went up to 10% overnight. <clears throat> And so they can reduce the Fed funds rate in order to uh, keep those short-term rates low. The rest of the market is all market-driven. The rest of the, the longer-term rates are all market-driven. I mean, it really all depends on what the perception is that uh, where rates are going to go. Now, what, what happened, the reason, there's two reasons why rates would rise in the long-term end of the yield curve, and that's the anywhere from the 2 to the 30-year. Any current from the two to 30 year will rise for two reasons and two reasons only. Number one is the economy is doing better. And so they want to cool it down. So, the, so the, if, the, if, if the economy is doing better, there's more demand for loans. Banks will raise rates a little bit in order to say, hey, look, hey, the demand is there for a loan. I can get a little extra interest out of it, right? So it's all market driven. The other reason why it might go up is that there's too much risk in lending. And so banks need to compensate themselves for the additional risk that they're taking. And so in my opinion, I think like in the seventies rates, uh, you know, well, after the seventies and the early eighties rates started to rise a little bit, actually, yeah, you even have to go back farther than that when rates were actually normalized and the fed was out of the way, when you're talking, like maybe in the early 70s, rates started to rise because the economy was doing very, very well. It was overheating. And so the Fed had to raise rates a little bit in order to cool it down. Well, after that, you know, you had hyperinflation, a little bit of hyperinflation in there because, you know, the economy is so heated that the uh, Fed had to raise rates to like 18%, 20%. That was really, really hot. That was the last time that the, we had real rates based on economic growth that was overheated and, and rates went up because of that. Now we're in a situation where, in my opinion, rates will rise contrary to what everybody thinks because the Fed is saying, hey, we're keeping it at zero or we may go to zero. The risk is that we may get rates to rise because there's so many people unemployed, uh, uh, I saw a chart yesterday. In fact, if you want to go to my Twitter feed, I, re I retweeted it. 20% of corporations are now using 20% of their cash flow just to service debt. That is an astounding number. It's just absolutely insane. You'll see the white chart with the red lines. Uh, that, that to me indicates that, uh, Corporations now have, are, are, whatever cash flow they do have is going to go into, there it is, uh, zombie firms, yeah. Rising share of company, companies with debt servicing costs, higher than their profits. <laughs> They're spending more money servicing their debt than they are uh, generating profit. And you can see that basically since the financial crisis has been going up, but you can see just over the last couple of years, are you talking about close to 20%? Yeah. The profits go to service the debt. That's insane. Which is only going to lead to them raising their prices for whatever they produce, which we're already seeing in the world, which is going to lead to the hyperinflation and just inflation yeah. in general. Yeah. So they have to raise their, they have to raise, uh, their costs are going up though. So I don't know, it might continue to squeeze their margins because their costs are going to continue to go up. They have to keep raising their prices just to maintain the same profit margin. Right. So I don't know, they're, yeah, they're not. They're not going to be able to raise it too much. Uh, they're just going to continue to to raise the prices because their costs are going up. Now, the other side of that is that it's also going to become way more expensive for them to refinance their debt because now the banks who do want to refinance their debt see that they're spending more on debt servicing. Right. Yep. And their profits they're spending more on debt service than they're, than they're making in profits. The risk to the bank is way up. Yeah. They because the bank's like be compensated for that additional risk. So rates are going to go up. Yeah. When businesses stop paying for things because they just can't, what do they do? They'll, they'll just default. Yeah. And that's why it'll yeah. lead to your raising interest rates as well. 
because they have to hedge that risk. That's right. Exactly. That's exactly right. When your risk goes up, you're going to ask for more money. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to say, oh, yeah, you're, you know, you're fine. We'll keep you at 1%. Oh, you have a greater, uh, you have a 90% of default. You know, your Z score is off the, you know, is just insane. And the, the chances of you actually going out of business are really high. Oh, no problem. 1% is fine. Right. <laughs> no, I don't think so. They're going to charge you, you know, they're going to be up there around 20%. <laughs> Tell me this. Have you uh, done any grocery shopping recently? Any grocery shopping? Yeah, I was yeah. out there yesterday. Have you noticed anything about your prices of, uh, do you say like hamburger or steak or anything or just meat in general? I do not buy a hamburger or steak at the local market. I order um, online. So I go to Alpine Butchers and they have gone up. Um, they, they had a, a 16 ounce steak ribeye for $24.99 uh, prime beef. It's a prime. So it's a, it's a nice cut of beef yep. and from $24.99 to 30. Imagine that, huh? Um, yeah, it, they're going up. Yeah. I was talking to someone, they were, they had picked up, they buy, I, similar to you, we buy from a farmer actually that we know. So we'll get a half a cow at a time. And uh, they were talking, they had just bought some at the local, not like your regular market, but like a, a meat store that does kind of like a Von butcher Hayes. shop. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Where it's a little bit better, but it's not a regular market. They bought eight pounds and it was over fifty dollars. Yeah, wow. It was like five or six dollars a pound, where it's normally like two or three. Right. So it's already beginning. Well, uh, we we mentioned DBA. Um, you know, it, it, it is in that is it, it's got that about uh, rounded bottom there. Right. We got yep. a little pullback today, but I, I'm I, it. Uh, I can see that thing going back up to forty bucks. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, we got to pull back today, but you're talking about 30 cents out of it. But you still got that rounded bottom, even on that chart, on a 15-minute chart. Look at the rounded bottom on that. Yep. It's like the last, here's your, yep. Here's your last chance. Take it before it runs. Yeah. Yeah, this might be a pretty good opportunity right here to start accumulating. Um, you know, uh, the one thing that attracted me to DBA in the first place and the commodities was the fact that they'd been in the bear market now for 12 years. And there's cycles, you know, you got a business cycle, you're up and you're down. Well, we had a really big, nice uh, commodity upturn back in the uh, early 2000s to 2008. And then ever since it's been in the bear market. Uh, I think we'll see stocks down commodities. Now this is the old, this is old school right here. Back in the seventies, the traditional safe haven or the traditional rotation out of stocks always went into commodities. That's really old school. Then during the financial bubble, it was out of stocks and into bonds. So this is like a throwback to the early 70s where you get out of stocks and you go into commodities. I think that's going to happen again. Sure. What was that site that you used that showed that? I can't remember it off the top of my head that where you could track the sector rotation and then look like the little worms flying. Oh, stockcharts.com. Was that just on stock charts? Okay. Yep, it's the RRG chart. That's it. Okay. I'll have to pull it up and take a look at that later. I haven't looked at that in a while. Obviously, I couldn't remember it. Yeah, that would be very interesting to, to take a look at. I, yeah, that's a, the RRG charts are really interesting. Um, it was developed, I believe, uh, the technique was developed by a Russian uh, uh, analyst. That's why they call it RRG. <laughs> yeah, I have no I, It's rotational something, something. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, that's a good one to go check out, guys. It's stockcharts.com. In fact, I'll put it in the uh, chat here. It's the relative rotation graph. Ah, there we go. We'll make it easy for you. Say that in Russian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can put any of that's the uh, that, 
now. It's the default, yeah, we can modify it. And you can modify it. But yeah, that's what it looks like. And then you can animate it so you can actually see how, you know, if you're in bleeding, weakening, lagging, or improving. Down. How do I turn that on? Um, yeah, I think if you go up to the top, look at the address bar. Uh, actually, um, I believe that you can put the symbols in. We. I think maybe it's because you're a, a free subscriber, you're limited to a certain number of. Oh, um, that could be. Sure. Maybe double click in the one that's already selected. No, not the SPX, the NYA or something. Click on the NYA symbol. Negative. Yeah. I know there is a way, even with the free one, you could you can change it. I can't remember how to do that. That's where you can come and check it out at least. Then when you hit animate, you can watch. There's the comp moving. Let's look for like. Yeah, if you go back like a year, you can see which ones. Look at the look at the uh, S and P there or the Nasdaq is leading, just about the whole time. <laughs> and the Dow is down. Now it's starting to. So usually they rotate in the the clockwise fashion. Yep. Now it's starting to rotate. But I mean, today we've got the um, Dow down 3%. Can you see this? I don't know if I've seen this before, Dave. We were almost at negative 1,000 on the ST. Wow. I don't think I've seen that before. 963. Wow. Yeah. And that wasn't even just from the open spike, that was a, it got worse after the open. Because yeah. we'll, we'll commonly see that where it gaps down like this and it opens up super down and it comes up throughout the day where it opened up down and it got worse before it started coming back up. But yeah, hundreds, almost a thousand. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. And so then it's moving up and they have the reports come out. Well, yeah, jobs report comes out and we're down 900 points. It's like, you guys just say whatever you want. <laughs> I love the excuses. I don't know, maybe the market is finally starting to catch on that the Fed is really impotent against the, you know, this market and that the, they can't uh, continue to, to push it around. And maybe that's what we're seeing. Or that it's just impossible to, you know, we're, he said it, they're going to lose all their money. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> whose money is he talking about? It's our money. <laughs> It's our, it's our, it's our future. It's our tax money. You know, let's take a look at the debt clock and see where that thing is. I mean, oh, that's going to be insane. And we, we went functionally bankrupt a few weeks ago. We'll pull that one over where we at. 20. So yeah, go down to the, let's see. Uh, oh, wow. Total U.S. debt. Is that like, all right, what? 77 trillion? Where is that? Which one are you seeing? The U.S. total debt in the middle there. 77 trillion next to savings per family. It's in the middle on the left side. Red, oh, it's all red. Down, oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. 77 trillion, do, do, I, do we remember? What that was? What they used to be? I wonder. I don't recall. Well, I can. It's uh, U.S. total debt includes household, business, state, and local governments, financial institutions, and the federal government. And the interest? Does it say interest? Because the interest is like three trillion dollars. Can you imagine? <laughs> interest per adult: fourteen thousand eight hundred sixty-six. Bank interest paid, bank interest received. Total personal debt is going up like crazy. I can't believe the guy who um, runs the site doesn't put ads all over the place. Yeah. You must be like super wealthy or something. <laughs> 
He doesn't need the money. I bet he's getting tons. Oh, there is a app. Maybe he has yeah, like, maybe they'll yeah, maybe he gets advertising through the app. Yeah. Oh, it says with no ads. Oh wow. I'll have to get that. Um, and then let's see what we've got. We've got dollar to gold ratio is at twenty six thousand. <laughs> Remember last September, October it was six thousand? Yeah. Silver, 173. Oh, Crypto coming down according to his. Yeah. But the unfunded liabilities, that's the killer. I mean, now we're six, uh, $6 trillion underwater. I want, you know, see, the thing is that when you and I have too much debt uh, versus our income, Somebody will step in and say, hey, you know, you better go bankrupt and then, you know, wipe everything out, start all over again. But who's going to do that to the U.S. government? Nobody. That's what I understand. Like, if you look at it as a business and, like, they look at their reports, they, they straight up tell you, we're this far insolvent, what are you going to do about it? It's about what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> like, well, hey, we can just print more money to pay our debts. Right. We'll just take the debt away. <laughs> well, here's an interesting figure. I was watching George Gammon this morning talking about whether this is going to be a depression like 1932, 1929, 1932. Yep. And uh, he looked at a chart in 1913. At that time, 10% of GDP was government spending. Ten, just 10%. Which means 90% was productive businesses generating goods, you know, and, services. goods right. and services, right? Yep. Today, it's 40% of GDP is government spending. 40%, so only 60%, and that's rising. So we've gone from 10% to 40%, and now because, I mean, obviously, because of all the money printing, and that was 2018 figures, so it's two years ago. It's got to be 50, 60, it's got to be over 50% at least by now. 50% of the GDP is government spending. <laughs> How is that even rational? That's not a definition of domestic product, it's just because the government's spending money? Right. Our money? It's spending. It's spending. Yeah, it's just spending. That's all it is. Right. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, they're spending our money. So, you know. And what I, I saw, I don't have it right now. I, they're predicting like between the top four, the G4 banks, and probably 12 to 13 trillion additional by the end of the year in just money printing. Well, here's how this is going <clears> to <throat> uh, go. And you know what? I don't even know if. I don't even know if the market could can sustain another rally or if the rally is really done. Just like in the 1929-1932 playbook, we had that first drop off in um, 1929. A rally back about 50%. This rally went up 82%. Um, in 100 and I think 110% on the NASDAQ, but the S&P and the, and the uh, Dow had a, I mean, it's just a gigantic divergence between the indexes. So it was nine confirmation of the Dow and the S&P 500. That was, maybe that was the rally that took in 1929, it took five to six months. Right. Right? Yep. And so now we're just going to go into a long extended decline for two to three years at this point. And will, or will that be extended as well, or uh, shortened as well? Or instead of a couple of years, will it be like a fast, sharper one down for one year? I don't know. Yeah, could be, <clears throat> could be. I would expect that we go down until like maybe September, have a little rally back. Uh, the Fed does some more stimulus. So we're up to, um, you know, uh, 100, 100, trilli 100 trillion on the, on the debt and the Fed balance sheet balloons from seven trillion up to 14 trillion. We get a little bit of a rally leading into the election. 
and then we start uh, the final decline. I, 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 you know, I said back uh, a couple years ago, I thought the Dow would go to 5,000. Uh, could be even lower than that on a sharp downturn. Might be what it takes to do the reset for the government and uh, maybe that will, that'll be their version of calling it, you know, instead of saying you gotta go bankrupt, guess what? Everything's just now your precious stock market doesn't work what you thought it was. Well, unfortunately, I think a lot of people are gonna get hurt too because uh, if interest rates go up, any debt that you have is gonna be reset. Uh, to higher rates. So if you have a floating rate of any kind on any of your debt, oh. you're going to you're gonna get squeezed. Oh, yeah. Anything with any type of variable rate. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what corporations are dealing with. See, their, their rate is typically set by LIBOR. Now, LIBOR is getting phased out, but it's still set by LIBOR. So if that rate goes up, you're going to get, oh, oh, that is going to be horrible. Corporations are going to, uh, instead of 20% going to debt service, you know, you're going to go to 40% and that's going to kill the market. Oh yeah. And how many businesses just won't last because they can't. That's right. Businesses, individuals, unemployment. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be pretty bad. <clears throat> uh, interestingly enough too, uh, in addition, I don't know if you've been following the crypto market, but we had a pretty, sharp sell off this morning when stock started selling off. I did see that. Uh, not, not horrible, but you know, we're down uh, three to four or 5% on just about all the major cryptocurrencies this morning. We've been following the stock, stock market basically. The, the low that we saw in March in cryptocurrencies um, pretty much matched the low of um, the stock market. You know, just within about the same period of time. And nice run up in cryptocurrencies, and now we're starting to see a decline along with stocks. I, the correlation there uh, concerns me. Um, yeah, if it follows when we get the next major decline, if the cryptos take a major decline as well. Yeah, I, I'm afraid all asset classes are going to get killed in the de deflation. Um, one of the things that um, one of the things that was very interesting yesterday. I was watching Bitcoin on the Gemini exchange and when the announcement, not, not, not at the announcement at 2 p.m. that they were going to keep rates at zero, but in during the conference, Powell's conference, yep, which was later, a half hour later, Bitcoin all of a sudden shot up and then completely crashed. And then it just kind of recovered. It reacted to the Fed's statement, the announcements, and about Powell's speech. And I'm thinking, that's like the first time I've seen that. Maybe yeah. it happened the last time, but I don't think so. This is, this is very strange to me. Right here. Yeah, why, why would, yep, yeah, that was, the, that, well, uh, yeah, that was yesterday. That, that's it. Yeah, wild fluctuations. It was even worse on the Gemini exchange. It's funny, at Gemini, for some reason, has a completely different chart pattern um, sometimes because it went way over 10000 It went over $10,000 on that move. Yeah, this one shows 10018 mm -hmm. is the high. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess that's about right then. I guess it did happen on Coinbase, too. Well, yeah, down to 9600 yeah, look at that fluctuation. And this is a 15 minute chart. I can even make it worse if I can find it. You can go back that far. Yeah. yeah, there it is there. So we had this shoot up. So there's the announcement for the report. Half yeah. hour later, he starts talking on this one. So yeah, here's the yeah. conference. So they're yeah. happy and they're not happy. Yeah, So, but it's the same fluctuation that the stock market had. If you looked at the YM futures, yep. They were up 20 after being down a couple hundred, and then they dropped immediately down 170. Same reaction, which makes me a little worried about cryptocurrencies, actually. Yeah, we've never had that very similar correlation before. Let's see if yeah. I can get that dialed in here. 
but I don't know why Bitcoin would react to a Fed statement like that. Right. Yeah, here's the five minutes during the on the YM. So here's where it went up. Yep. Like that. There's where it dropped right back down. Yep. The only difference being is did it drop? Ah, continued to move lower. Yeah. yeah, why the manipulation there? So that's just that's really interesting actually. Because that's what it always is, and you see it happen, right? Where it's interesting when you see these reports come out. Did I click too far? Where am I at? Ten. Let me get back to it here. Because it's usually, it's almost like they're taking both sides of the trade, right? Because it happens, and then it reverts to back to where it was before, just like this on the Bitcoin. Or it's like, yep, we're slightly moving up here, and all of a sudden, up, down. But look, if you kind of just erase that, yeah, went from here right to there. Yeah, exactly. So it was somebody who had a big sell order, they wanted to get rid of it at, at 10,000. And then they just, uh, they put the sell order in, started buying it up a little bit, and then got to 10,000, sold the whole thing. Boom. Yeah, where you have enough actual volume where you can do that. Exactly. Yeah, and look at, I mean, you, if you look at the order book on Coinbase Pro there, you know, the majority of the Bitcoins being traded are like, 0.19, 0.2, 0.3. They're very small amounts. Yeah, tiny trade sizes. Very small trade sizes, yeah. One time I, I sold five Bitcoin on There's there. And moved, it moved the market. <laughs> yeah. It's like, whoops. There's actually one guy had 2.3. Yeah. That's pretty rare. That was a buy order. Yeah, it's pretty rare. Most of them are pretty small transactions. Uh, they do have, Coinbase has an institutional platform uh, that you can trade on as well. And I got to believe that the uh, the uh, trade, uh, I mean, they're going to obviously try to sync the prices with the Coinbase Pro. So you, you, you're you looking at price on Coinbase Pro moving when there's only 1.1 Bitcoin or 0.2 Bitcoin moving, but the institution side could be trading hundreds of Bitcoins at a time. Right, true, yeah, and you have no idea. Yeah, and you have no idea. You guys are a quiet bunch this morning. Any questions? Yeah, what are you, yeah, what are you, what are you guys thinking? What's going, what's going to happen here? Alexander, how's it down under? You're down in Australia, if I remember correct, right? That was another big one George was talking about with the housing markets down there in, in Aussie land. They're like really overinflated, aren't they? Yes, I believe it's a, the, one of the bigger bubbles right now that's going to be the leading downturn. And I had to squeeze these down, so it looks like a normal chart, but these are 100 point blocks again. So what we, oh, German, right. sorry, sorry, Alexander. Oh, German. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, I know, it's like the, the, um, the, the, the right um, uh, index there changes on you, the scale changes. <laughs> you know, it used to be like 10, 20 points, now it's hundreds. Right. Um, Alexander, you're, since you're on the room quick, I think you did send me a note. Did I, did you, we get everything fixed on your access? Are you able to get into everything? I think you'd sent me a note where on the switch over was a problem for a second. I wanted to make sure everything was okay for you. So let me know if you're uh, able to get in again. Okay, it was only once on the old site. So you're, everything's good to go still, awesome. Yeah, he probably wouldn't be able to get in here unless he had that access. That's true. He wouldn't have that. That's very true. There you go being smart on me again, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's called me Mr. Obvious. There you go. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Captain Obvious. Here's one. Uh, since we're only looking at one line, I'll maximize this. This is one thing you don't see very often either. Is uh, You know, we have our pivot levels. 
Yeah. We're at the bottom. So that was, uh, I know there was, uh, Eric had a nice trade overnight where he put on a short at the close because he saw what he needed to see and then he closed it out this morning. So that was a nice little, little overnight, but it's very rare that we see these. Yeah. All it played on this. So we hit the first one, kind of bounced off. Second one bounced, hit these levels. That was support for a while. Then all the way down, and now we're sitting right here. Yeah, so it's pretty rare we get a nice trending uh, action like that overnight. Right. So we drop below that, and there's nothing else to hold it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Just my quadrant levels. Wow. Interesting how that's a 75 and a 25 sitting right there, too. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So if we hit those, where would we go? Where would we, what were those levels again? These are the monthly and weekly quadrants, I believe. So 3091 maybe is the next stop. Yep. Looks like it'll probably, I got a feeling it might just kind of chill right around in here for a while. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised to see this go sideways all day. Yeah. As soon as I say that, it'll go back up here. Yeah, that's one thing. That's why I'm trying to pick out when I think about um, uh, Mark S. I saw those quadrant levels down and was curious to what time frame those were done. So I think they're weekly and monthly. Yeah, I started with the monthly. And then is that, so I think that's a weekly and a monthly overlay. So it's probably the 75 on monthly, the, probably the 75 monthly. Yep. And then it's the 25 on like the daily or weekly. If you guys haven't uh, checked out my newsletter, subscribe to it at strongmarket.com. Go check it out because uh, uh, what I'm trying to do is identify those areas which are going to turn in the new business cycle. And I think DBA is definitely going to be one of them. Um, you know, I, I added HYG to the watch list yesterday. HYG was that ETF, the junk, junk bond ETF that they, everybody thought the Fed was going to go in and start buying. And it just rocketed up after that announcement came out that they were going to buy corporate debt. Um, if interest rate, now these are, these are the zombie companies, the ones that are, you know, spending 20% of their cash flow on servicing debt. And boy, I'll tell you, if interest rates even shoot up a half a percent, that's going to like kill the HYG. Uh, so I see DBA as an opportunity, cheap price, 12 year bear market maybe coming to an end. I see HYG, even a small in increase in interest rates, and and especially the risk that the banks are going to be taking on is going to raise it. Could get absolutely murdered. So we'll see. I'm trying to think macro here. Yep, exactly. All right, I think that covers the topics I had. I got to turn that deck clock off. That's <laughs> it's this stressful, isn't it? Yep, exactly. Jeez, it's not bad enough that we have personal debt. Now we have to look at our national debt and worry about that. That's one thing. Uh, is, uh, I could... Reduce... What's that? I'm reducing my own personal debt another big click this week so i'll feel very good about that so i'm yeah. doing the opposite that the government wants i'm getting rid of all my debt sorry government you don't get me well see you and i both and probably everybody else because uh and in and, and what that is is when you re when you reduce your debt that's deflationary you're taking money out of the system you reduce yep. see so that's the that's the unintended consequences of stimulus money well, it's ridiculous, too, where they're talking about, yep, we're going to have to do another one. And it already hasn't made it to, like, half of the people that are supposed to get the first one. Yeah. So they're already like, yeah, this, the first one didn't work. It's like, no, you didn't even get the money to the first people. That's a whole different topic, though. Well, it's interesting, too, because I, I ended up getting an offer because I did the, um, 
I did that first EIBL thing for a thousand bucks because I have I'm the only employee in the in the company. Yep. And so I got a thousand bucks. And then I get this email, which is kind of interesting, uh, from the Treasury Department saying, Oh, hi, you can set up your account here and for document for uploading documents. I said, Yeah. Oh. So I, I, I go in and I set up the account and it had nothing to do with the EIBL loan. They were offering me money to borrow they said you're eligible for it was a lot of money <laughs> and, I, and it's like i guess the next state maybe i don't know if it's a ppp or whatever i don't even know what it is they just offered me money <laughs> and i said no thanks no, thank you. yeah i had the one that finally responded to the i think it was the very first original sba.gov when it first happened to apply and they say yep here you go and you can take it it's like mm, nope thanks yeah, no, so you, going you, want, that. you don't want to be in bed with the government at this point. Yep, I'll just keep my stuff at zero, and I'll be happy. Yeah. That's the right, way I, I, Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, that's the, it's the only power that I have is uh, control my own destiny and not let them control it. That's right. Be financially smart. Uh, do your own research and do what's best for you, because at this point, you can't depend on the government. No. Yep. The very first green bar, just because it came after a, a longer one on the volume. That's okay. It's still going to be a bad day. I'm done trading. I hit my goal for today. We're good to go. Sometimes yeah. I'll be able to talk about it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be doing any trading. I had a couple of VIX calls, uh, VXX calls. Uh, there's, those are doing really well today. But other than that, I haven't done any trading at all. I just threw it on yesterday. And we had the nice little uh, MN MNQ trade that you and I talked about. You hit, boy, you hit that exactly. You said, hey, it's going to 10,000. And I think it was at 9,982 or something. So I had another 16 points to go, 18, uh, 18 points to go. And it hit it within like 15 minutes after you said it's going to 10,000. <laughs> I learned from the best, Dave. <laughs> But you nailed it, I'm telling you. I said, nah, it's probably a couple of days, you know, I'll get up there. But boy, within like 15 minutes, it hit 10,000. That was the goal. That was the target. Yep. I remember I sent you the picture. I had a sell order in at 99.99.75. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I took that and uh, we were happy with that. I took a nice 12 points off a couple of NQ contracts that day. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I did very well. I, I hung in there a little bit longer. I got a few few more uh, ticks out of that, but uh, that was a nice trade. Yeah, it's those, the interesting of the big round numbers that they like to call them. And there's, cause you know, people are, I think it jumped up to like 10,003. Yeah. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So, and it's funny, like it just shot through it. Cause there was a whole pile of orders. Then when it filled them, it did that spike to three, like you didn't even see it. And that's the volatility of the NQ. Yeah. Where it just bounces, then it just dropped like a rock again. Then it hit it one more time, so I think it hit like three chances. It right, did. Uh, well, now it did. Yep. Yep, it did, and you had so, yes, yeah, so you had a couple of chances, but um, yeah, that yeah. was a fun one. Big round numbers, you know. So, uh, anybody think that uh, the Dow is going to forty thousand before it hits five? I mean, it could. I, I'm just curious if anybody anybody think that the hyperinflation is going to hit stocks, or are we kind of done with that? That's an interesting. You know, it could because it could go either way. I, I it's this is. I I texted somebody this morning, and um, a guy who lives in my area, and he's also really into XRP, and I said we're in the twilight zone now. <laughs> He said, yeah. Yep. This is the twilight zone. Going lower. Look at that. Rallies should be sold, I guess. I may, maybe that will come back now and we'll see that. We'll see that finally that bear market start to emerge and those claws are coming out. Right. Where's the SPX is at 3% down right now. 3.6 and 2.9 on the major indexes. Holy cow, look at these guys. 
everything went insane. Lots of red. NASDAQ's trying to be stronger, but it's coming back to catch up. It's still a point ahead, but the Dow's the winner to the downside so far. That's quite the gap. Yeah, we're going below 26. That's for sure. There's 1,200 points. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us again today. You know, gonna, you know they're going to blame this on, Dave. They're going to blame it on <laughs> protesters and the coronavirus round two. Of course. It's not their fault the economy is in such bad shape that it can't even take a, a you know, a couple week shutdown. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're about that time. I wasn't even watching the clock there. So thanks for joining us, gentlemen and ladies that watch the recording. Absolutely. You have yourself a good weekend and uh, we'll be in touch. Yep. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Tuesday. You're welcome, Mark. Happy to have some good times. Yeah, I'm Jander. Good. Take it easy. Andre. Dave over there. Andre, good to see you. All right, Dave. Have a good day, man. You too.